Can BDSM help me succeed in polyamory where I have failed in the past? When I first started exploring the poly life two years ago, I thought I had to be as open as possible. I had read a lot of poly literature and articles stating that in the poly community, hierarchical polyamory was considered unethical by most people, and I even dated people who held on to this belief. My main partner and I had both expressed to each other that we wanted to be each other's primary partners, but because I thought I had to do what was morally right by everyone, I showed up in these other relationships and not being realistic or honest with myself and others about what I wanted, and I kept things too open-ended. I definitely showed up with some codependent patterns in these relationships. Looking back, I realized that trying to be as open as possible was a delusional mindset. My fear of rejection and need for control was still present. Now that I have this hindsight, better awareness, and I'm communicating more with my partner, I want to start exploring polyamory again, specifically with other kinky people. Something I really like about BDSM is the possibility of hierarchy and finding play partners. This may just be my assumption, but I feel like in BDSM, there is more space and acceptance to set up hierarchical relationships and the ability and emphasis on negotiating exact terms and conditions of relationships. Do you have any insight or feedback into how BDSM can help me approach polyamory in a more successful way? All right. So first thing, uh, my dear, sweet, uh, killer cutie, you are so cute. And this is a killer question. Um, but my dear, I think you are like, you're, you're looking over here when we need to be looking over here. Are we ready? Are we ready to shift a little perspective here? Because I really think I'm going to, I'm going to just really simplify this for you. Your question was, can BDSM help me succeed in polyamory where I've failed? Number one, if you tried something, you didn't like it, you didn't have a good experience with it, you didn't fail. Let's just go ahead and take that out. You're not a failure. You didn't fail. You tried something, eh, wasn't for me or the way I did it, not so much for me. And we're just working out the kinks. No pun intended. We're making some adjustments, okay? That's all this is. Because if we're looking, if we're putting that failure, it's, it's performative, there's expectation, there could be shame around that, and I don't want any of that in this conversation. So uh, let's just start there. But can BDSM help me succeed? Uh, can it help me approach polyamory in a more successful way? I think that this issue is not about BDSM helping you approach poly in a successful way you didn't fail. The system that you were engaging in failed because I think it was a clash between desire and expectation. You want, want me to break that down? Break it down. Break it down. Mm. Here we go. The desire is, is hierarchy. That's the actual desire here. Five times in your question, you made reference to primary partner, main partner, and hierarchical relationships, which means Having a hierarchy in terms of me and my me and my person are here. And then we maybe have some play partners. It's very important to you. It seems like that is not just a desire, but like a boundary for you. That's correct. Okay, fantastic. So that is your desire. And it's such a desire that um, you want, you're thinking BDSM will help you accomplish that desire because you can negotiate exact terms and conditions. So you were calling it, you know, you were saying that before when you tried this without the exact terms and conditions, when you felt pressured to be more open, you called it your fear of rejection and need for control. What if that wasn't actually it? What if you're blaming yourself for something that's actually very normal and valid? What if you're calling the fear of rejection and need for control that sabotaged things in the past, what if it's not that? What if it was an accurate response to those boundaries that weren't there? Sounds like you really need and desire those boundaries. They weren't there. And so maybe you, oh shit. So maybe you thought it, this is triggering my rejection and my need for control. Maybe it's not. Maybe it was just a healthy response of going, wait, I don't have the boundaries that I need here. I don't have the boundaries that I need to feel safe and free in this kind of lifestyle and this kind of structure. Because that's very, very 
seems to be very important to you. Um, so, and I think that's part of the clear boundaries thing. That's the result of hierarchical polyamory. It's the result. Clear boundaries, yeah, is the result of that. We up here, and this is exactly where you stand. This is exactly how we can connect. This is exactly how you can connect with my partner. What if it's just that? What if you just need to feel like we still have this intimacy? My, my primary partner, partner and I still have this level of intimacy where we know we got each other's back. Now, if we want something just casual and fun, we're going to talk about and negotiate every aspect of it. But for you to call that, you know, fear of rejection or need for control, I don't think it is. What if that's just what you feel comfortable with? And those are just your boundaries. And I think the expectations that you felt by that literature that you read, those articles that you read, those communities that you were engaging with, who tried to shame you for saying, no, 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 you, that's not how we do it here. You're not allowed to have those boundaries, not allowed to have those desires. And if you do, you're not authentically poly. It's shame. It's guilt and shame trying to control behavior. So we want freedom and relationship and openness. And so Killer Cutie, if you experience the opposite, where you got shamed and judged for your very normal, valid boundaries, that's not, that's not you failing. It's just the clash, I think, that happened.